Hello, welcome to Pom in Alls. I hope we're all doing well. It's our time for our review of the game. And Cowan have got another dub. How good is that? It was an absolute splendid night of football last night. If you were impartial, I'm sure that was a great game. First of all, huge thanks to everyone who watched the channel who has liked and subscribed. We just hit 300 this morning. So if you are new around here, please give it a like, give it a share, give it a sh whatever we do, a particularly a subscribe. That would be grouse. See if we can get 400. But thank you so much to everyone. Now, let's get into the game. So the game was, for me, it was a seesaw affair. It probably wasn't the greatest spectacle of free-flowing football. The weather didn't allow for that. But we'll dissect it into four quarters because that's what football's played with. But in the end, as they always say, the old golf saying of it doesn't matter how you play, it's the score that you sign for at the end. And we, we signed for the better score that day. And I thought it was a really... I thought the first quarter set the tone for the game. Though we weren't quite on. You could tell when a kick... Just some, something wasn't quite there. But what was there was intensity. Um, I think that was amplified, you know, with McKay and Betts combining to smother that dead ball deep in defensive 50 to create the stoppage. Jones laid an absolute monster tackle on five. Um, and I thought what really separated the sides was Fremantle's defensive structure was just absolutely fantastic. Their ability to turn the ball over and concede possession but then reset really shouldn't be understated. And I think Longmuir will make this side go very far with that skill. It was there most of the game and it was really tough for Carlton. I thought the switch just happened just towards the end that Jones went off Fife. Fife was giving him a bit of a bath and they brought Plowman onto him. I thought it kind of negated Fife's influence here on in. I think, um, for me, Plowman is a really underrated player. He he started on on Old Walters at the start and we know he's got a winning record versus Plowman. I mean, versus Walters. And I thought that was a big shift for him because we know that he's good with smaller bodies that are quick. Fife is an ox, he's like Cripper, and I thought Plowman did really well, so shout out there. I thought that first quarter, though, that was what I was observing when I was watching it. My notes here was, we just weren't taking our chances, and I feel like that became a theme for for the rest of the, the game, really. In the second, we, again, that pressure was there. We talked about it in Analytics Corner on Blue Abroad, that we had to bring the pressure, don't allow them easy kicks. McKay had a great tackle inside 50, causing the hold and the ball. Wasn't a great shot goal. There was too many, though, for us that they also brought their pressure. There was a lot of long balls down the wing, a lot of turnovers. Um, but, again, that tackling was there. Cultural on Aish was brilliant. I thought Kasbot looked really good, was ma ma bringing the ball to ground, trying to play to our strengths. Um, one thing, though, to me, which is the theme pretty much of this, is our indecisive entries inside 50. There was a lot of indecisive kicks in there. You could see there was the second guessing. There wasn't quite the movement in front of the ball. And quite often the time that when we did kick it in, it was a little bit short. However, that kind of changed in the third quarter. We were overusing the handball way too much in the first half. And we started to really trust our game. And I thought we could have been ahead quite a lot. There was a few of these little brain fades. There was Jones. He went to take the mark out when he could have brought it into his chest. Rule number one in football. But I thought Honey started to show a bit of things there. The overlap run, looking to try and stretch them. And we started to use the ground really well at this point with the kicking game. We started to spread it. We started to make it wide. And you saw that 3-0 weren't as efficient as defending width as they are when we were going narrow and we were going the corridor. I still have question marks about SPS. I thought he was quite loose at times. My notes here suggest that. But what, really, what I was really impressed was Plowman really started to negate the influence. If you were watching it at home, at this stage, the, umpire, the, the commentators were starting to talk about getting someone, getting Fife back on the ball, getting on the ball. And because we were dominating there and Plowman was dominating Fife. I thought that was a really key battle for Cal, and he was someone that they've deployed up forward, and you have to stop him because he takes, he really does take a lot of work, and I thought Plowman did it again exceptionally well. I thought our pressure really went up a notch. There was that wonderful tackle by 
Kennedy, that set up McKay, and we were really gaining ascendancy in the middle, and I thought TDK was brilliant, and we were dominating play where we just weren't getting awarded, and there was little things that, you know, stopped that. There was that breakaway run by Fisher, who went to go and hit the handball over the head of Eddie Betts, and we were two out at that stage, and that was, to me... Maybe the uh oh moment for me. At this stage in the game, I wasn't feeling confident. I felt like we were getting ourselves into position to win it. We just couldn't quite execute it. And then the fourth came, and I thought Willow really, really showed some what I've been talking about. We need drive off half back when Stock gets held up. Doc was held up to an extent this week. He, he wasn't allowed to leave. He got a lot of the ball, but you watch, he wasn't allowed to exit 50 with his usual e of ease. And I thought Willow did really well. He, he had a bit of a loose moment where he turned it over to Fife. But aside from that, he was just fantastic. He really did look to hit targets to run outside of 50, defensive 50. And it creates that stretch. When you're under the pressure, just being able to run it out, gives you a lot of time. Buying that extra 10 metres allows that defence to reset. And I thought we saw the pressure come here. There's kind of like a switch team presses and the boys go all for it, hell for leather. I thought Cottrell started to show some things as well, really looking to impact the game. He reminds me a little bit of a, a Mitch Robinson type. There's a little bit of a, a dickhead in him, isn't there? And I thought his late bumps really set the tone. Um, I know a lot of the free fan, Fremantle fans are... Who are my friends? Big shout out to, to Blair and Andy, two good Fremantle friends of mine. I know it hurts, um, and I'd love to feel sorry for you, but I don't. But there, there was a few, there was a few late hits that they've questioned, and Cottrell was the cause of that. I thought that was a kind of justice, but I like that because we need to be a bit mongrel. We we need to play the game a little bit. I thought um, SPS really laid a couple of two important tackles in this. And I thought Fisher really looked to take the game on. Um, there were some stupid entries in that last two minutes. And let's talk about that last passage of play. That dot kick sums up where Cowton go wrong. It's our senior players, our mature players, and they make basic skill errors because Gibbons was in a world of space. As it turned out, though, Brayshaw, late bump, down the field free. And... Tell you what, Jackie Noons, I've backed you in quite a lot this year against probably my better judgment and against a lot of heat from the Carlton faithful. But I'll tell you what, when he was fannying around with the cameraman, I was a little bit concerned because I was thinking, well, this is a distraction technique. This is, he's trying to make everything right. And genuinely, you know, when you are nervous, you can make some errors. But when Betts went over to him, whispered in his ear, I, I just knew. I was like, I just knew it was going through. Absolute sweet spot. He said it post-game that you imagine doing that as a kid. I always imagine scoring a free-kick 90th minute winner for my team in the FA Cup final. So I feel him. It's probably something we all do. And that was it, wasn't it? It was great to see. It was great to see the pylon, I've got to say. And then basically I just spent the evening singing, Oh, what a night. Watching Carlton on a Friday night. We beat free because oh, they're fucking shy. Oh, Noonsy, what a night. And that was that was it, wasn't it? Another four-point win against Freer. Um, I mean, all in all, I thought it might have not been the greatest game from a purist point of view. But I think what this symbolises, and it's something that I can't keep saying, but I am going to anyway because I am a dad to many children, so you've got to keep being repetitive. And that is, you can overstate what this side does for me. And what this side does is it can be anyone. It can match up with anyone. That confidence is there. You look at the core makeup of our side in height and weight, skill level. We can match up with anyone. And I think the only thing that can beat them is, is themselves and what's between their old ears, you know, the old grey matter. And I thought this showed that they were willing because they, they deserve to win that game. In, in the fourth quarter, they, they, they had more ball, they looked a better side, they looked like they were going to make something happen. It did feel to me the last five minutes um, that Frio were holding on and we just weren't capitalising on our chances. It was, again, our experience that kind of turned it over quite a bit in key moments. Um, but for me, all in all, we got 
the reward. Effort usually gives you the reward. And I thought we deserved that. Like, I'm not sat here thinking, God, we've robbed Freer. I'm thinking the AFL gods finally rewarded us for good, honest football. You, you know, effort and intensity. And you look at the clearance numbers. We were on top in the second term and we did the job. And that makes me so incredibly proud of this football club because that's what it's about. If you're not, that was by no means Carlton's sweetest performance this year. But what got us over is the will to win, the belief. And that is a huge thing for me. When I look, I watch a lot of sport. When you look at the good teams, the fantastic teams, the fantastic players, they have a self-belief. And that self-belief, nine times out of ten, invariably gets them over the line when the other team is indecisive. Watch Federer. He does it a lot throughout his career, particularly in his later years, that he can play someone over the net who is gaining ascendancy. But his belief, his, that chapter book three that's got the William Balls that I talked about last week, it's now slowly starting to be erased and we're starting to get a little manual. And for me, there's little things, just composure, just composure with the ball. And that will build, that will build the more these boys get themselves into position. But that was a fantastic performance. And I am so incredibly proud and I'm so incredibly happy. Um, you look at our fixtures coming up now. We've got Gold Coast and you can see their legs are tiring. I mentioned it two weeks ago. A lot of changes happening there. You can see legs are tiring. They are a young side. They have worked really hard. I think they're vulnerable. And then we've got Pies and we've got the GWS. Pies looking at all sorts of bother. And we usually do nine times out of ten, even when we were atrocious step up against these mugs. And GWS... That can be anything on the day. It depends which GWS turn up. But, I mean, let's remember Coggy betrayed us for Gillian's blood money. So there should be some heart there. Hopefully Cripper gives that guy a bath. And let's go through the wonderful 22 that started. So we'll start with Eduardo. I mean, one thing Eddie Betts is bringing, which he hasn't had for a long time, is his defensive pressure in the forward line. Six tackles he laid this weekend. That is a phenomenal effort. Was, was kind of there or thereabouts. He, he had the obligatory behind. Still hasn't had a goal for, what, is it three games now? Three or four games? He's, he's getting in the positions, though, and I think... I, I do think there's an element of... It reminds me a little bit like when you've got Zlatan Abramovic up forward. He, he, he creates chaos because you know who he is. And chaos reigns supreme. Um, it wasn't his greatest game. It wasn't crash hot by any means. But he did enough for me to show why he's there. Levi... Is there a better marker in the competition in the wet or in the grease? Because he just pings marks. Six marks he had. And he, he, he was taking pack marks as well with that. I thought it was, again, another accomplished performance. Didn't get quite that many hit-out times. I thought they'd actually split it. You saw TDK. He did about 70% TDK. And I thought he had some real good hit-out moments as well. He's a really good option. For me, moving forward, TDK and Caspo are our rook combo. I really like it. And I think it suits the model of all the other clubs. He brings it to ground well. He plays to his strengths. Took a decent goal. Yeah, he had the behind, which was probably an important point of the game. But for me, that goal was really set the tone. He's a real threat. And you can see defenders do worry when Caspo's around. I thought it was really good as well. Like he brings the ball to the ground. He looks to play people in. He's got decent footy IQ, he was old Cassie. I thought it was a, I really did enjoy his game. Contro in his second game, he really did show what he's about. Only played 67, 66% of the game time. So he, he played about the same as he did last time. We've got 14 touches. Um, a good couple of marks. No tackles I was surprised about, but he gets himself in them positions. And one thing about him is his meters gained 360. It's, that, that is where you want to be. It's the sweet spot. I was really impressed with his drive, his endeavour. He's got his intensity. I was super impressed with it. Cripper is another one who I thought he had a really good game. 24 touches, six tackles. Um, I was surprised there was no marks in this one as well. This was another one that I had to check chance data and a few other mediums because I was like, that can't be true. But it was it was a captain's performance from Cripper for me. Um, his goal kicking does worry me. Um, because he's due a goal, he's Crips, he's getting in the right spot, but he, he sets the tone, doesn't he, for us? I mean, eight clearances, 18 clearances between him and Ed who we're coming on to, but for me, he, he set the tone, he showed what he was about, he, he he used his body well this time. He looked like he was attacking the ball, not the player. Um, the last couple of weeks, I felt like he's got into arm wrestles, 
this week he did he did what he did. He does what he does well. And he probably deserved a goal for his performance. It was a very solid performance for me. Ed Kerner, the master in the wet. Now, this is what, when we talk about experience, this is what we want. This guy sets the tone. 10 clearances, 4 tackles, 33 touches of the pill. And watch what he does when he gets the ball. He, he, he kicks it forward. He kept the ball moving. 536 metres gained. You win football matches when you get one bloke doing that. It's, it's an important start. And in the wet, it's amplified of how important it is. Gets the ball moving and he does his job. Um, for me, we talk about underrated players, we talk about Luke Ryan and stuff, but for me, that guy does not get enough kudos for what he does. N doesn't. Like, the AFL media, sort yourselves out. You've got Ken Corns, you've got Lloydy talking about monotonous bollocks about down the free free kicks. Start talking about these footballers, man, who put in shifts all the time. I'm tired of hearing about Martins and Fives and even Crippers to an extent. Talk about the footballers that bring it week in, week out and do a shift for their team because without these type of players, you don't have the football. You, do, you don't have free-flowing football. He, he does his role for the team. For me, understated. Understated how good Ed Kerno is. I mean, the work ethic, the intensity, the never-say-die attitude... For me, I love watching Ed play. Give the guy some freaking kudos, the media. TDK, 21 hit outs, 80% um, of game time. I, I was I, I was happy with what he did for me. Um, I know it might have not been like the legendary rook performance, but for me, let's talk about things that stats don't talk about. Um, I think his ability to work in traffic, I think his ability to work when the ball is on the ground, um, for me, that is a huge factor. He's very good below his knees. He really does offer an option, an outlet as well. And it, he's got second and third efforts. And I think his agility is understated. The kid is so agile. And I really do enjoy his game. For me, moving forward now, it's a Tim English situation with Carton. Just throw the guy in the rook. Throw him in. Um, Doherty, 19 touches. You know, you, no tackles. He, he didn't quite have that energy off the rebound 50 and you saw Crowden did a really good job on him um, he found the ball he didn't quite give us that injection off half back but again he impacted the game in other ways he did get the ball out to Williamson a few times who did make that rebound 50 um, he's a very important cog and for me if this is his worst game who cares do you know what I mean like he, he, he finds a way to impact um, the kick at the end could have been a disaster to Gibbons could have been a complete disaster however we got away with it and he, he deserves to get away with it he deserves me sat here saying it was a good game and he brings so much to the team wasn't his best game by no stretch of the imagination but for me if the guy can find 19 ball touches and keep the chains moving down the back and that's a bad game yeah we're killing it um zaki fisher didn't get the goals this time but for me, he brings so much. The tackles were there. The forward pressure. We've got quite a footballer here in the forward line. And I really enjoy that. Pressure is important. We didn't allow the back line them easy kicks. And Fisher was a key part of that, along with his mate Gibbons, who we'll talk about. And we'll talk about them both together. For me, they offer so much moving forward. The way that they do apply a lot of pressure. They don't allow it easy out of defensive 50. And both of these guys were just lacking goals. Um, Gibbons, big shout out for his appeal um, because that was a good appeal. That was cricket esque. I enjoyed that. Very solid games from these. Really understated to our system, these two. And now we've got Zach Fisher there. I think you've got Jace Oster coming there with forward pressure. And then you've got Betts making them six tackles. Whether he'll be there or not is another matter next year. But Jace Oster, Gibbons, and Fisher, that is a lot of pressure in the forward line. And it's very akin to, you know, your West Coast Eagles, your Collingwoods of locking it in. It's exciting times ahead with them too because they're really building into something. Josh Honey, um, unlucky behind. Um, I know I've built him up a lot. I mean, it's his first game. It's a tough position, half forward. He, he drops deep for the ball, comes looking for it. I was more than happy with it. I think with his runs and stuff, it's someone that they're going to have to get used to um, and how to utilise it. But for me, there were signs there and I'm looking forward to seeing him. For me, it was no different to Cottrell's game last week. And... We saw Cotter had a really good week, so I'd expect a really big week from Josh Honey. He's got his feelers in. He's our lucky charm, one and one. Let's get him two and two next week. But enough signs there. I mean, he drops deep. His overlap runs, his turn of pace. Them overlap runs, if Setterfield and Murphy, when he was overlapping, had a better kick. I don't know why Murphy tried the banana to him. 
and set as it was a bad bounce really cost him but his willingness to scrap for the ball was there what we talked about yesterday he, he's got a real hunger and i enjoyed it liam jones he struggled on five at the start five did give him a bath um and there's no way you can argue with that like check that first quarter again i know Carlton fans don't like saying anything negative about Jones, but we've got to be real every so often. Can't live in fairyland all the time. But after that, he readjusted. I mean, Jones has got a really tough job. He plays that loose man. He plays that intercept. He plays very loose on it. And it, it, it's hard to analyse him because you watch it and you think, why can't you man up? But then you can see it's definitely a tactical deployment of how he plays. He competed well. He spoils well. There's sometimes he spoils that I wished he's marked. But for me... It, 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 it's a tough job for a key, def- key defender in that type of weather when you are someone like Liam Jones. The goal, the goal kick was horrendous. Um, it did. I can laugh at it now. Tell you what, if the scoreline was f- five points different, probably wouldn't be giggling about it. But he competed well after that. He did really... What I love about Jones is, I think Jones will know that five gave him a lot of problems in the first quarter. But after that, he did readjust well. Um, and yeah, it was an okay game for him. I thought if I thought he did what he needed to do. Matty Kennedy next. Um, it was quite a game from Kennedy, and I, I thought this game when it was wet and greasy, it was really sad for him. Um, some under, understated things that Kennedy does off the ball. He does bump really well. He does protect. He gave Cripper a lot of freedom. He does look to come off his man and create space. Um, another player that for me sacrifices his game, he reminds me a lot of Mitch Robinson's game style, that he sacrifices his personal numbers for the betterment of the team. Um, I saw a lot of that, I saw a lot of that, um, you know, shepherding, looking for the bump, looking to free up someone out of the contest, and he did that well for me. Uh, Harry McKay, tough day in the wet for a big tall forward, but took, could have had a couple of goals. He looked really threatening for me. Um, Really good aerially, isn't he? Um, some of the kicks into him were woeful. Um, Murph was probably guilty of that a few times. He's one on one, and if the kick drops short, yeah, he's, he's not. It's not his best. It's not his best asset. Is his groundwork? His his work is done in the air. But he, he competes hard. He looks to make contests. Some of them tackles he lays are absolutely exemplary. How many key forwards in the game have the tackle pressure that he does? Not many. For me, real positive signs and. I think you can see this side, I still see it 12 games in, that they're learning this system, they're starting to learn the patterns that come from it, and it's building, it's building to something special, and I think we're only a couple of games away from really smashing the side, once it clicks, like I'd say, you know, I'm not going to say Gold Coast is the game, I'm going to say Pies or GWS, you can quote me on this, all you guys who screenshot stuff, get ready, it, It'll be one of them that we absolutely decimate. We actually fire. I'm going to say Collingwood. I've just got a feeling we're going to absolutely fire him. Shout out to Sweet Luke, though, mate. I know you're suffering at the moment. Matt Murphy. Um, people are slating Murph. It wasn't his greatest game by any stretch of the imagination. There was a few of these errors. I think what people... like We know I love Murphy, um, and I work a lot with Terry, who adores the guy. I love Murph, right? So let's let, let's get that out of the way. I don't want any of this. Oh, how can you criticise a player when they win? Well, you, you can do because that's how you get better. You get that, that. That is how every human being gets better. If you didn't have that, God knows what happened on in your childhood. But that I digress. Murphy, there was a few loose moments, particularly in the fourth when the game was on the line, where probably you expect players like him to hit targets at that stage. However, that being said, I thought he did really well. 23 touches. Um, there was the three tackles there. For me, he, 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 he hit targets throughout. It was just when that pressure came on, he, he tries too hard. I, I feel with Murph, it's not composure. He tries too hard. He tries for that perfect moment. Um, but for me, I, I love Murph. And I still think there is a part, there, there is a place for him in 23. He, he, he does use the ball genuinely beautiful. And for me... He has a tough role. He's, he's redefined that, and I enjoy his role. But that's my only criticism. I just like him to do the simple stuff when the pressure's on. He, he, he sometimes looks for that extraordinary. Noonsy, not surprised, motherfuckers. Not surprised. Been a big fan of Noons all year. Um, had his back all year. Um, up until that point, let's, discuss, let, let, let's call it two games. 
probably wasn't his greatest game. He, he missed that he missed that running in goal, which really did anger me because I had him for a golf as well in my multi. Um, but he does he, he does compete well. He does. It wasn't his greatest game, but he competes. He he's always within that tackle length of the kicker. You can see it puts them off. He genuinely runs into them as well. Gets that like late bump. There was a couple of late bump decisions that went against him, and I like that. I like the way that he says to them, "You're going to have to take the contact if you're going to kick this." But the goal, man, what a snag! Noons, best hair in the com. You probably look the best in the Guernsey in the com. Freaking best after the siren goal in the comp as well, bro. Phenomenal, mate. Clutch as it comes. Super proud of you. I I, I felt like a dad when he did it. Because I was like, if he clicks this, they're going to love him. But if he misses it, I'm going to have to defend him. Phenomenal effort. Great work, mate. Great work. SPS. Um, again, I don't think he's a defender. And I think this game showed me even more. He was looser than one of my belts from last year. Um, doesn't really provide the energy as well. Like 98 metres game. There was nothing being brought from halfback flank. I still think he's in the wrong position. I watch him and his handballs in traffic are brilliant. Like, get him on the ball. Put someone else there. I'm going to say it and I'm going to get slated for it. Cam Paulson, third week in a row, right up for his energy and his zip off halfback flank. Let's see what he can do. Gold Coast are a perfect team to play it because their forward pressure is... So, let's bring him in um, and move SPS up forward and rest one of the guys. Plowman. How does this guy not get love? Like, what am I seeing? What are Carlton seeing? And he gets slain every week. Did a job on Walters for the first quarter and did really well against Fife. I mean, Fife is the best player in the competition. And he won. Six tackles, some great tackles, got Fife holding the ball twice. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah, well done, Plow. Well done. Don't know, don't know what you want from me. Great effort, Plowy. Fairfield, I thought he really took over in the fourth. Um, I thought he was really good. I was really, really enjoyed his. It, I, I really enjoy his endeavour, his intensity. Um, for me, that is an understated thing about him. Um, at the six tackles again, really puts the pressure on. Around that twenty all the time as well. He, he's a really good on baller. Really enjoying his game. Sammy Walsh returned to form. Twenty-four touches, the three tackles, seven clearances and the goal and behind it was complete really coming of age i'm really enjoying these last couple of weeks when the pressure's been on this guy has stepped up we talk about composure under pressure this guy's got it in abundance like for me when he's got the ball when we're in the shit or we're in trouble sammy walsh kills it love sam walsh loved his game jacob we in a bit of a tough night in the office against taverna because taverna's a freak in the wet um it was tough. It was tough. He was against someone who was in form. It was probably his least complete performance this year. Um, but I thought he competed well. I thought he, he stopped. Tab Tabana could have had eight, eight and nine. Could have been a Hawkins night for me. And I was watching that. The warning signs were there. They were, they were exposing him. They were doing like, you know, the basketball ISO. He loves to be one out. My one criticism is this. Um, Tabana drops deep and Wheatering was like in the midfield with him at times he comes looking for the ball and I'd like to see what Harris Andrews has at Brisbane where if the player is on goes to a certain point he goes back to the goal square doing his job and someone takes him um, because I feel like that exposed our back line because Wheatering do was doing his job and play, ma play the man but for me when Wheatering goes out there we look vulnerable down the back. We really do look vulnerable, particularly airily. And that is my one criticism. And that's not on Wheatering, that's on structures. Don't get me wrong, Wheatering for me being our best player all year, he's an absolute god. But for me, that was it there. He does he, he does get guilty of being too good a defender. And I think for me, from just a selfish point of view of the back line, when he leaves defensive 50 and the ball gets turned over and he comes in quickly and he's not in position because he's doing his job, we look vulnerable, and I'd like to see that more like what Harris Andrews gets. He gets that benefit. Willow, I am loving this guy's game. Nine touches, um, four marks. I thought it was really good. He, he he locked down Walters. He he went to Walters when they did that shift. He he towed up Walters. 
Also, towered up Fife in the fourth a few times when Plowman got away. I love the way Plowman and Williamson are working together like Tweedle done Tweedle D. Really enjoying that. That is a sign of a good side. You're out of position. I've got you, bro. And I'm starting to see that from this team. Super performance. I really enjoy Williamson. It's great to see him get runs out as well. All in all, for me, it was a good performance. I thought it was endeavour. It was gritty. It's the kind of football that traditionally we would have lost. We would have lost the heart. We would have lost the legs. You can't question these boys' heart. You can't question these boys' intensity. For me, pressure-wise, we stand up with anyone in the comp. We've now got a great chance to play Gold Coast, who are much fancied this year. The media are proper blowing smoke up their ass. And then the week after, we've got GWS and Collingwood. And I said that Carlton's have got this thing that let's try and fuck someone's finals up while we get into it. I'm confident we'll make finals. I, 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 think, I, I think we'll win all of our games but one. Big call. Let's do it. Let's do it. Great support in WA as well. Big shout out while I'm here, though, to my girl, my number one girl, Dione, who watched this game from a beach in in Asia with me. She was waiting for some chick to swim 25 kilometres, I think, with a Mai Tai for her. Solid work, Dione, but she kept me company. We will be doing it next week where I'll be chatting to you because you are a lucky charm girl. Hope you have a splendid holiday. Big shout out to Lana Owens. Big shout out to Tracy Reid. Big shout out to Adam Gould, Arrow Hart, you guys keep me going, Josh Klebs, there's so many to mention, but you guys, honestly, great messages last night, I really enjoyed it, Peter Haywood as well, love your emails, bro, and everyone else, I'm a happy pom, please let me know in the comments, who was your best on, for me, my best on was Ed Kerner, two votes I'm giving to Mr. Sam Walsh, and one vote I'm giving to Patrick Cripps, I thought it was a solid performance from the boys, let me know your 3, 2, 1. Go Baggers!